talk a little bit about the facilities, about equipment, about standard operating procedures and reagents and chemicals. And uh, then I will go through a GLP study and talk about the study protocols, the study report. Towards the end, I will discuss uh, recording and archiving. And I also will talk about a little bit about raw data, which are becoming more and more important. And I will close the presentation with recommendations on how to prepare your laboratory and organization for an FDA and other inspections. And I have also quite a few examples of inspection reports, uh, like the FDA warning letters and 483s. And as we call to that, we have a Q&A session. So uh, if you have any question, uh, you just uh, write it in in the Q&A uh, section. And uh, we will, uh, till we will, this means I will have the questions at the, at the end in writing for me, uh, so we can sort them out and, uh, and, and answer them in a, in a specific sequence. <coughs> okay, we go to the next slide. And this shows the, uh, so always I prepare some reference material for my presentations because I think it's not enough for a seminar like this just to listen to the slides and to see the slides. Uh, but you have something to work on, some, some material where you can start implementing what you have learned today. So, and you can download this material. There is a website. You also have the, uh, the, the, the user ID and the password at the bottom of the slide here. So we have everything. And uh, just let me talk a couple of them. I have a primer on GLP GMP. This is about 120 pages long, so it's quite detailed and is complementary to this presentation. Also, I have a couple of SOPs. I think in total, I have about 10 standard operating procedures on the website, uh, but here there are only listed the most important ones. For example, there is one on generation and maintenance of SOPs, which would be the first standard operating procedure you develop in your organization. Anticipating that there will be FDA inspections, that means there is an FDA inspections, SOP, preparation, conduct, and follow-up. Uh, there is one on training. Training is very important on GXP, uh, CFR Part 11, and computer validation, and also records and archiving, archive retention and archiving of your study data is very important. Not only the electronic records, but also the paper records. So this is all covered by this SOP number four here. Then we have a couple of checklists, like on, uh, on generic and good laboratory practices. And there is another one just on auditing laboratories. And there is an FDA compliance manual, uh, which has been written by the FDA for FDA inspectors. Uh, it's called Good Laboratory Practice Non Clinical Studies. And it advises the inspectors on what to look at during a GLP inspection. And as one of the inspectors always told the audience what is good to know for the inspector, it's also good to know for the inspected company, for the inspected laboratory. Okay. So again, you can download all the reference material from this website here. Okay, this one shows here is also a very important, the so-called good practice regulations, how they correlate between GLP, GCP, and, G and GMP, uh, how they correlate with the life of a drug starting with basic research and drug discovery on the left side, and uh, then it goes to preclinical development in the middle and clinical trials, and finally to the manufacturing at the right side. Typically, research and drug discovery are not regulated at all. GLP starts with preclinical development, for example, with toxicology studies. Clinical trials are regulated by good clinical practice regulations and manufacturing through GMPs, good manufacturing practice regulations. I just want to, might want to mention here that there is a frequent misunderstanding that all laboratory operations are regulated by GLP, including the quality control laboratory and manufacturing. This is not true because the quality control laboratories and manufacturing, the QC labs, are regulated by GMPs and not by GLPs. Then we have uh, we also have 21 CFR Part 11. It's written here. This applies for all. To, it applies to all FDA regulated industries, including GLP, GCP, and GMP, 
and it applies for electronic records or the computer systems in all FDA regulated areas. Characteristics for GLPs are that they are study based, where GMPs are process based. You will go through a study, a study, a GLP study from beginning to the end, including all documentation requirements a little bit later. This will be the most important part of this seminar. At the end of the preclinical phase here, I mean, you see this, this error uh, underneath, you see IND, Investigational New Drug Application. Uh, this is at the end of the of the uh, of the preclinical phase here, and uh, this uh, will be reviewed by the FDA. This document will be reviewed by the FDA. It includes enough information, enough safety information, such that that the study can move to clinical trials, and uh, then at the end of the clinical trials, we also have an, a new drug application or biologic license application for biological drugs here. And uh, so uh, well, after this has been reviewed, uh, the company can start marketing the product. And even uh, maybe uh, we see here at the right at the arrow at the right side, post-marketing surveillance, that uh, FDA is requested for, on, in theory uh, to inspect, inspect all manufacturing facilities about every two years. But in practice, they cannot do it because they don't have enough resources. So Again, GLP is study-based, and that's the reason why we talk about study director, study protocol, and so on. There is a manufacturing part. Part is more like the uh, is more uh, uh, process-based here. <coughs> okay, now we go to the next one here, and this talks about the GLP regulations worldwide. GLP regulations have been developed and promulgated by the FDA Food and Drug Administration in the United States in the late 70s. So regulations have been transferred under the umbrella of the OECD. Uh, these are the, uh, the principles of GLP, good laboratory practices to other countries like Europe and Asia. Because regulations in general are not specific, both the FDA and also the OECD, they have developed more detailed guidance documents for specific, for specific topics. So, for example, most important are FDA's GLP compliance program guidance manuals. This is the most important one. I talked about it already. This is the direct link also on the website. And uh, then uh, the, uh, the regulation itself, of course, and also the OECD to have uh, developed the uh, principles of good laboratory practices and for interpretation, for to easier interpretate the GLPs, they also have developed this consensus document on specific topics. There is, for example, one which just came out as a new one earlier this year, earlier uh, at the end of last year, and it's related to using computers in all GLP areas here. Okay. So uh, now we go to this slide number six here, and this slide shows the scope of GLPs. They regulate all non-clinical safety studies that support or are intended to support applications for research or marketing permits to, for products regulated by the FDA or by similar other national legislation, which includes medicinal and veterinary drugs, Aroma and color additives in food, nutrition supplements, in livestock and biological products also. The duration of the study here is, uh, is, is of no importance, and also the, uh, it's of no importance where the study is performed, conducted. Uh, if, uh, if a sponsor company subcontracts part of the GLP studies to a subcontractor, uh, they, they, they have to comply in the same way, so it's independent from the location, and it's also independent on how long a study lasts. Everything has to be, to be controlled by GLP. It shows here the, uh, the, the definition here. GLP is a regulation. We should, we should know it. It's not only good analytical practices. Good analytical practice, of course, of course, is a prerequisite, but it's not enough. For example, the laboratory must have a specific organizational structure and procedures to perform and document the laboratory work. 
the objective is not only quality of data, but also traceability of data, integrity of data, and the validity of data. But the biggest difference between the GLP, I can tell you, non-GLP work is a type and the amount of documentation. For a GLP, uh, for a GLP inspector, it should be possible to look at the documentation and to easily find out who has done the study, who has performed the study, how the experiment was carried out, which procedures have been used, and whether there have been uh, in any problems, there have been any problems, and if so, how the problem has been solved. So the uh, GLP is estimated here, the frequent question comes of here, how much does this cost more than a normal uh, analytical work here? So uh, we can say that the, the GLP operating costs may increase uh, the, 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 the cost by, by 30% just by the additional documentation we need to have here. Okay, uh, this shows here the, uh, the probably just uh, the key requirements because this is basically what, what we want to find out today. What are the requirements? And this gives us just a high-level overview as it is shown here.